Hello, everyone. Good evening. Um, I welcome you to this live session. Uh, my name is Francis Handofo, and I'm speaking on behalf of Voyager Special. So today, our section is going to be a 30-minute section for four days, hopefully. And each of the 30 minutes, we are trying to explain to you the restructuring that's currently happening within Word Geospatial. At these sessions, we hope that you would come to understand what we are really doing. We'll come to understand the full potential of the platform that you have been part of since uh, 2019. And then you also come to understand how you can contribute to be able to make this whole ecosystem a better one. Okay, so the one as in today, we are going to discuss just what what your special is, what what your special media is. I know we have we've had so many uh, confusion with regards to what is what your special and what is what what your special media. So today we want to be able to talk about that. We will clear that uh, confusion. Hopefully, we hope that we will get some people to be interested, or we'll get some people to really understand what this whole thing about. Others will get to understand along the way as we move along. So I'll start with giving you some uh, little background, and then I would go ahead to explain to you what what your special what what your special media is, and then hopefully I'll take questions as to if there is any. If you think you forget your questions, you can kindly put it in the comment section and then we would immediately respond as soon as we see it. So I just want to give a little bit background of some interesting outcome that I read last year. So <clears throat> this is a, a research or a survey that was conducted by the Special World in collaboration with the United Nations Statistics Division. And the whole idea was to be able to identify to what extent countries are ready in terms of geospatial infrastructure to receive the future of the geospatial economy or the geospatial space. And as we will go through, I just want to highlight this few interesting outcomes, and then we that would introduce me to uh, why were you special and why were you special media? And so it anticipated that the geospatial world or the economy, geospatial economy, is going to be uh, is going to grow by seven hundred and sixty billion dollars between twenty twenty two and twenty twenty five, and it's going to reach somewhere one point four four trillion in 2030. And by 2030, the, it's assumed that the economic impact of geospatial technologies on the world economy would be within the range of 15.4, 15.84 to $30.24 trillion. Okay, now the those projections are made on the basis or on the pillars of the fact that the demand for geospatial data and technology across industry vertically is going to increase. Technological innovations are going to advance. The integration of geospatial workflow into the already existing work that we have in the market, it's also going to grow. And then the, the quest or the desire for people to enhance spatial analytics in business processes and then the global geospatial markets. All these pillars put together are what is going to give us the estimated projection of the $760 billion between 2022 and then 2025, and then expecting to hit 2030 by $1.44 trillion. Now, we know that uh, this information that has, has been provided doesn't automatically mean that all geospatial professionals are rich, are going to be rich by 2030. The, 
the spatial world and the United Nations as well explained that while we are expecting the geospatial industry to grow at that accelerated rate in the next five to seven years, it is also interesting to note that the growth will not be evenly spread among different, uh, different geographic areas, which means that countries are not going to get equal share of these projections that has been stated. And it is for only countries that are ready, as at the time the opportunity avails itself, that are going to get that opportunity. I am going to use, when I read this, I decided to look at Ghana. That's where I come from, but it is not limited to Ghana. But I've decided to use Ghana as my, my case study to see whether this, this projection could actually be true. We are in 2023 now. And from 2017, Ghana has been making certain decisions politically that I, I see the, the evidence of the projections that was made by this survey. So in 2017, the Ministry of Communication in partnership with Ghana Post, in Ghana, uh, they embarked on the development of what we call the digital address system. And it cost them about $2.5 million to be able to execute that project. The whole idea is to be able to find where things are, to find where people are so they can tax them. And the idea is to develop a digital address that has embedded in it a latitude and longitude so that informal sector people can be identified and tasks can be taken from these people. Also, in since 2016, Ghana decided to and back on the digitalization journey. In this digitalization journey, the World Bank has stated that it provided Ghana with about $200 million from 2016 till now. And this $200 million uh, has been shared to support some of the activities that Ghana is uh, trying to do in terms of digitalization. If you are not in Ghana, my, my simple description of what Ghana calls digitalization is all location-based. It is all about converting what was done in manual system to what was done to something that is digital. But the intention is to be able to know who is who and who did what. So it is all about finding the location of stuff that we did not have control of initially. Ghana also had in 2012, Ghana also had um, another project where they decided to embark on what we call the street naming and property addressing system. This was supported by USAID, the World Bank, and then uh, other donors like the GIZ, who, which I think supported financially and then technically. And this, the calculated project initially was cost, was going to cost them $30 million. Okay, so if I look at the projection of the $1.44 trillion by 2030, I've already realized that Ghana is already giving out a lot of money within the geospatial world, or Ghana is already giving a lot of money to geospatial developers and geospatial professionals to be able to create design and give them what the country needs to be able to cover. In the, in the academia point of view for Ghana, I don't know what will be happening in your country, but what I'm trying to do is to let you understand that these projections are likely to be true. These projections are real and it's happening in some other countries. It might be more than more in your country than probably it is in Ghana. It might be less than it is in Ghana, but I want to say things that I have seen and I have witnessed. So that's why I'm using Ghana case because that's where I come from. And I've been following the trends of what's happening. In the university, uh, system. The University of Ghana was the first to launch in the country a Master of Science in GIS as of 2016. One year after the launch of the Master of uh, the MSc in GIS, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology also launched uh, MPhil in GIS. Now, since 2016 till now, 2023. There are more than 10 universities now that are offering masters in GIS. 
if you don't know how academia works, academia is also a gentle business approach. So academias design courses based on the, the demand in the business food or the demand in the industry. So when you see that there are certain courses that have been designed or a lot of schools are trying to bring up certain courses and trying to do short courses and uh, coming up with trainings, it means that by their survey and by their projection, they anticipate and they see that that demand is very high within the industry. So they are taking advantage of it so they can get also their part of the money. Now, GIS and remote sensing in the University of Ghana, for example, was just an elective course. And in the University of Ghana, the, it was only level 300 that you can do GIS, or you can get the option to choose to do GIS or remote sensing. Uh, since 2013, that I left University of Ghana as a student. So now, because I still work with them as of now, so now the number of students that have they have, they have been choosing GIS and remote sensing as part of their courses have increased from 40 students as at my time to 695 students as at the last semester that, that we just had. Now, this is telling you the extent to which even the students are recognizing the need for, for them to take courses that has the prospect for them in the future. So if you look at in the in the choice of courses, for instance, you will realize that there's there's a there's a wave, there's a time where certain courses become the hot kick. So at some point in time in Ghana, nursing and then pharmacy was a was a notch. And everyone wanted to do nursing, everyone wanted to become a pharmacist. As time goes on, parents keep on advising their children based on what they see happening in the in the in the business world. So if you see the number of students who are picking certain courses. It is an indicator that there's something interesting around that course that everyone wants to go and do it. Not because the course is cheap and everyone will get a grade, but it's because the students see future with taking those courses. Okay. Now, at the moment, apart from the, the 300 that the university allows the students to choose only GIS or remote sensing course, now the, the university is now considering there has been a lot of proposal the university is now considering to spread GIS. Now GIS is going to be taught at level 200, level 400, level 600 and GIS has been introduced in the different parts of the departments in the University of Ghana. The geology people have now set up a GIS laboratory. The, the, the sanitation and Environment department have set up GIS laboratory. Public health has set up GIS laboratory. Almost every department is coming up with a GIS laboratory. The recent one I, I came across was soil science, which I've also tried. They are also trying to get money to set up GIS laboratory. I'm trying to try, I'm trying, what I'm trying to do now is to bring to your mind the demand at which the GIS industry is growing. Now, this is the projections by the to special award and then the United, the United Nations Department of Statistics. These are the pillars that they anticipate. Uh, they, are, they actually measured countries on. And it is about data on availability, the contradictory data, uh, licensing and restrictions, and then the high procurement cost are the major problem of in the geospatial world when it comes to our part of the world, say Africa or Ghana. Now, the geospatial world looked at how, how well is the geospatial technology integrated in the policy framework? What is, to what extent are foundational data, geospatial data available for basic geospatial analysis? And then to what extent are organizations partnering and collaborating to enhance geospatial environment? The, to what extent do we have industry leadership that is basically uh, having more industry leaders who are thinking space, who are thinking location. And then they also look at to what extent are applications and analytics and modeling being used in a particular um, country. And then the geospatial dimension 
in terms of to what extent uh, the wider digital ecosystem, people from computer science, people from uh, mathematics, statistics, to what extent are the wider uh, digital ecosystem trying to adopt into spatial knowledge. Okay, and like I said earlier on, now almost everyone is doing GIS. Almost every program that you you would you would see, they are trying to incorporate location intelligence into it. And this tells us that it is getting interesting and our needs or our skills are coming to the light for demand. And are we ready for us to take take on this, this um, opportunities that's going to come in our way? And secondly, it's also giving us the, the indication that if we are prepared, we will be able to get enough from the geospatial industry. Now, if you look at the special world in the United Nations, listed 50 countries that actually uh, were geospatial, what they call the geospatial infrastructure ready. And out of the 60 country, it was only Kenya, which is the African country that I saw. We, I did not see any other African country in them. And it brings me to what I want to share with you today. We're just special. So we're just special. We are a non-profit organization that was established in 2016. And um, we've been in Ghana. The team, the core team started in Ghana. We've been in Ghana for a while. We work strictly remote. We, because we are, most of us were in Ghana, the initial stages, we had some few face-to-face -face meetings, but we strictly work remotely. Our motto is that we believe that everything happens somewhere. So that's, that's what we are all about. We just want the world to understand that everything that they are doing is actually geospatial. And if they adopt the geospatial technology, they will be able to work efficiently than what they are doing now. Okay, now our mission is that we want to boost the geospatial industry by identifying knowledge and structural gaps and then developing custom solutions for them. Now by this, what we are trying to say is that it is our focus, that's our mission we feel we have, is to let the world understand that location intelligence can fit anywhere. And the way we are going to do that is first of all, identify an already existing knowledge gap. And knowledge, uh, let's say, lack of information and then we will provide that we will fill that gap with the necessary information that is needed we also identify structure so we look at systems we look at uh, how things are working and we, we try to identify the structural gaps and then based on the structural gaps we try to create solutions to them and the solutions we are creating what we are saying is that they are not solutions that are mandatorily adopted by government or ad adopted by organizations or companies, but they are prototypes of solutions of what geospatial technology can be used for. This can escalate. This can get cut the attention of some people that it can go into mainstream development, but we are not interested whether our solutions are going to be taken up into mainstream development or not. We want to keep on showing the world that the geospatial knowledge and geospatial technology can actually fit in everything that is happening around us. Now, our vision is to create a geospatial ecosystem that is going to aid development by utilizing the geospatial technologies. So after identifying the gaps, after identifying the knowledge and the structural gaps, we want to be able to use our prototype solutions that we have created to let the, the countries or governments and institutions knows that development can only be accelerated and monitored efficiently through the geospatial technologies. So as we provide more prototypes and as we share our prototypes to the world to play with and have a fuel of, the world will come to adopt geospatial technology in the development of, of, the, of countries. Okay, so that is our vision. Our vision is to create a geospatial ecosystem I will explain this ecosystem in detail within the week, I think day three, and then we'll understand what we mean by geospatial ecosystem. Now, you've heard of what geospatial media. What geospatial media is more to us. We look at it as, as more of the outreach program. 
So after all the prototypes have been developed, after everything that we are talking about is done, the whole social media is what people see. That is what people actually uh, come into contact with. That is what people interact with. And so World Special Media facilitates the vision and the mission of World Special. So World Special is a very small team, not even up to five, but then World Special Media is a very large team that currently we are still increasing the number. And we, we hope that the large team will create an ecosystem that will be able to help show to the world the prototypes and the things that we have done. Okay, so if you hear of word geospatia and word geospatia media, the media is more like, it's, it's a strategic outreach program. It's a strategic outreach um, system that we are putting in place. That's going to help the world to be able to have contact with technology inclined, geospatial technology inclined people and their solutions. Now, let me use this analogy to explain to you what, what really I'm talking about. So if you buy a computer, you have, if you buy a computer, you have um, an operating system, which we call the OS. Now the operating system is like the man that is the God of the computer hardware that you're holding. Now the operating system is the one that detects to you what kind of applications you can use on the computer. So if you get a computer that is, let's say Windows, Windows needs a certain kind of applications, what we call application software. So if you want to get uh, Microsoft Office, if you want to get, um, let's say your RGIS, if you want to get your QGIS, even if you are going to get QGIS, you go and look for a version that will be compatible to Windows. What basically that means is that Windows has defined a framework he has defined a con he has confined its environment such that not everyone can play in so people who have who will subject themselves to their rules and then the attempts are the ones that fit within that environment and so the application softwares like the your the microsoft word microsoft excel and stuff is what we look at it as the prototypes of word spatial media and then the computer os which is making that which is defining the framework is what we consider as word special so word special is basically the ones that make decisions about what kind of uh, logistics can we can we put in place to be able to make sure that the ecosystem runs smoothly how do we finance the the, the logistics how do we get certain things done so at World Special Media, some of the discussions that are done, they sometimes are financial. You might not, you might never hear financial discussion in World Special Media, but World Special itself, we, do, we talk about financial. The team there are contributing their personal money. They, are, they work extra or they take part of their salaries to be able to uh, create that environment for us. The idea is that the team there are more pe are people who are more, they are motivated differently. They are motivated from a different angle and they want to see the geospatial industry work. And so we, we go to the extent of using our financial personal money to do to get certain things done. So acquisition of server with a, a high capability and then acquisition of a long-term lease of domain and acquisition of certain things that we need, logistics, digital logistics that need that will make this whole thing work. That's what actually they put in place. They also contribute more of their time than any other person. They can work so many hours within the, the, the week. So that's what happens within the World Geospatia itself. A World Geospatia media is basically the application software that comes and plug their socket into the World Geospatia environment. And then they will be able to uh, get all the necessary cushioning to be able to work. Okay, so tomorrow I'll talk about the blueprint, but today I'll leave it here because I decide to do 30 minutes only per day. So I'll leave, uh, wait for questions. If you have questions about what Word You Special is, what Word You Special Media is, what are, what are we really doing? 
And what is this whole thing about? I'm sure I've given you some glimpse of it and you can ask your question and then we'll look at it. So we have five minutes to 8.30. I'll take the questions and I'll respond to them if we have any. If you are at a place you cannot speak, you can type it in the call, in the comment section and then we'll respond to it. Are there questions for us? Okay, so if there are no questions, I want to say thank you very much. Uh, this the, today, what we have done is to just talk about what word you special is, what word you special media is, and we hope to talk about. Okay, someone is, has asked whether there are any project where you special has worked on. Uh, when you say project, um, how do you mean, like? Um, research-funded projects, or you mean any projects like developmental projects? So we, we, have, we have worked on several projects. Uh, I think that we've worked on, I can't give you a figure of it, but we worked on a couple of projects. We, the core team, the individual members, have developed different prototypes of IT solutions that they they have solutions to problems that they have identified in society, and we'll be happy to share some of them with you when we when we get to the the full implementation. And then we have also had instances where we have also had instances where the um, Organizations have contacted us probably because they saw some some of our prototypes and they wanted a similar solution. So we put what we do is that we put a team together. We have I don't know if any of you have been on this on the platform for a while. Sometimes you get notification that someone says he needs a team to do some a team with particular people with specific skills to do one or two stuff. They are likely some of them are likely coming from what you special, but we will not put we, put we will not put it there in the name of what you special because uh, most of the time we are just assigned someone to take be in charge of that so they build a team from the the media what you special media page and then we take them to a different group where we take them through what should be done so we we'll get we we'll get to that so the some of the projects are open source if you go to our linkedin uh page if you go to the about us, I think we have some links. We have reference links there of some of the projects we've done that are open source. You can always check them. Uh, the ones that were developed for organizations, uh, some of them requested for their source code. So once we are done with them, we don't really go to them. We don't really show their, their applications like that, but it is being hosted on our server. Currently we are hosting all the applications we have developed for ourselves and the organizations have been hosted by registration. By our policy, we host it for two years for you for free. And then after two years, you decide to host it wherever you want to host it. So go to our LinkedIn, uh, Grace Lynn. I hope I'm mentioning your name well. If you go to our LinkedIn about us, there should be links there. If you check and there are only like um, bullets of the project, but there are no links, just draw my attention. I can direct you to some of the links. Okay. So uh, by when by day three, which is somewhere Thursday, I will talk about the whole geospatial, the geospatial ecosystem that we are going to use. And then that's where you hear more about projects. You hear more about uh, how the geospatial projects are going to be carried out within this 
uh, the space that we are creating. All right, so thank you very much. Tomorrow we'll talk about the blueprint. The blueprint will tell you about everything where you specialize the, the original organogram of where you special and how it connects to each other. And then uh, the subsequent days we'll explain about the kind of people we expect or we're anticipating to come to where you special and then the ecosystem, how is everything going to connect to make it, to make it work. Okay, so I hope to see you tomorrow, same time, uh, 20 GMT, 20 o'clock GMT. And then tell a friend to tell a friend, let them follow the channel. If they don't want to be part of World Special Media yet, just forward the channel link to them. They can follow the channel. It's like following someone on Twitter. Whenever we post something, they can, they can get a notification and then uh, still learn more about us before they decide to be part of, of us. But, uh, we will explain more to you as the week goes. I wish everyone a good evening.